Welcome back. Next, we'll look at loading a script from another script. So we're going to be using some scripts we've created earlier for you, just to save you the hassle of having to do it yourself. So we've got two scripts. One is called the master script and one is called the secondary script. So if we head over here and have a look at that, so we've got master script, which does two things. It prints out a message telling you it's the master script, and then it's going to load the secondary script. So you can see it's just the system command backslash L we're using here that we've seen in the previous video. And then in our secondary script, we see we're just printing out a message saying this is the secondary script. So let's load in the master script. So first of all, it's loading in saying this is a master script. So we know we've got it in as far as here. And then it's loading the secondary script, which is printing out the second message here, which we see. So we know it's managed to execute both. So that's how we can cause one script from another. Okay, so next let's look at passing parameters to a script, which is a very common requirement we might need to do. Um, so to do this and demonstrate it, we're going to add a new line to our QScript.Q from the previous video. So if we go back to this one, add a fourth line here, and we're just printing hello again, but we're now joining it on with this name variable. And note that name doesn't exist yet. We haven't referenced it yet here or defined it. Um, so we're going to first define the name variable locally and then we're going to load in the script and you see it's joining on this string here to the end of the hello because we've added that here hello.name so this will work um, but it's not good practice to do it like this and that's because locally defined variables like in this example name that can be de manually deleted um, so one way to do this in a more robust way would be to add any of these variables to a config file um, and then another way would be to pass these variables explicitly at the same point you're loading in the script. So let's see how we could do that. So to do this, we're going to look at a new function called .z.x. And .z.x will basically return our command line parameters at any point. So if we hop over to code.kx and have another read of this, we've got the option to use uppercase x, which just gives you the entire raw command line. And then dot z dot lowercase x will give you the command line argument as a list of strings. Okay, so let's just show that in action. So if we go over here and we hit new, we have the option to also launch a terminal. Um, so this can be better seen from the terminal than the Jupyter Notebook in this example. So if we did q and then did name, and then if I just say name header, and then if I run dot z dot uppercase x, oops, dot z dot uppercase x, you'll see I'm getting the entire output here. So Q and then name Michaela. And then if I did dot z dot lowercase x, I'm just getting the variable itself, which is name and Michaela. Okay. So we're going to introduce this dot z dot x function into our script and we're going to replace that hello name line instead with this. So let's copy and paste this again head over here, get rid of this line and paste in this. And we're printing out the value of dot .z.x is, and then we're going to print out dot .z.x value itself, which will look something like our terminal, what we've seen in the terminal, which was here. And then we will print out hello, which is part of that .z.x. So we're indexing in here into the index of one. And then we're commenting, we're going to exit the script and then we're going to use our exit command as well to exit the script. So let's load this using the system command. So we're going to start a new session Q, load in Q script and then pass any variables we need. And have we saved our Q script? We haven't, we know that with the little asterisk. So let's just do control S and we've saved that now. Go back in here and if we run this, we see we're getting our first statement, hello, which is there from before and then we're getting the value of x dot z dot x is then we're getting dot z dot x result printed out then hello then the name of the variable because we've just pulled out that specific um, variable and then we're telling the user we're exiting the script so this is okay and um we can definitely do this um when we've got more than one variable though it starts to look a little bit confusing so instead of just name we're also passing a variable age here so let's run this and see what it looks like um, so we're, we want to pick out just the age value, for example, and it's a little bit diff difficult. Um, so a nicer way 
to format your .z.x result is using this inbuilt function called .q.opt. And all it does is takes that list of command line arguments and builds a nice dictionary for us that looks a lot better. So let's do the same thing again. So copy and paste this, head over to qscript.q, replace these lines. And instead of just printing out .z.x, we're gonna do that first. And then we're gonna create a dictionary D um, running .q.opt on .z.x. And then we're gonna print that out as well. I'm gonna show you the difference between how those two look. We've got those saved. Now run the same thing again. And you'll see here is what the value of .z.x looks like. And then if we run output the value of .q.opt on .z.x, you see it's got a nice dictionary format. And then if we add in even more command line arguments, you see here, it's kind of hard to see which is relevant to which, but here it's a nice dictionary format. And you can tell it's dictionary visually just by this um, vertical dotted line. And we will be looking at dictionaries actually in our next module. So don't worry too much about that notation. Um, but you can see it's a key value pair here. So where name is relevant to this arson and then age is 56 here. Okay. So have a go with this exercise. We want you to create a script which takes these four numbers as command line arguments and returns the sum of the numbers. Okay, so I'll pause here and see you in the next video.